For almost the past month, I have given myself a challenge. Only use Linux, and if I use Windows at any point, I have to delete this channel and the channel I've been managing for over 10 years. The challenge is almost up. We've covered making the switch, content creation, and gaming on Linux. But now, I want to talk about something that I feel is the most important when discussing an operating system. What is it like to use the damn thing? I'm going to go over the main things your typical user might need to do at any given time. Watching YouTube, slash TVs and movies, having a video call, printing documents, doing updates, and installing the program. Let's start with something easy, watching online content. Starting from when you first turn on the system, all you have to do is log in, open up your browser of choice, and head to the site where you want to watch your content. I did say it was an easier thing on the list. Although, it does depend on where you want to watch said content. Some sites don't allow you to watch content on them because you're on an operating system that they don't support. The website is able to tell what you're using because of something called a user agent. All you really need to know about user agents is that they tell a website what operating system you're using. I've brought this issue up a couple times during this challenge and a few of you have given me ways to try and get around it. One of them was changing my user agent, which Chrome allows me to do, but this still doesn't work for every single website. Someone else let me know to try watching Peacock through Firefox, which I'll try right now, and it still didn't work. I even tried setting the user agent to Windows on Firefox, but it still didn't play. Of the streaming services I currently have access to, which are Amazon Prime Video, Crunchyroll, Discovery+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, Max, Paramount, Peacock, and Pluto TV, Peacock is the only one that doesn't seem to work. So as long as you're not trying to watch something on there, you should be good to go. Moving on to printing. Printing on Linux is miles ahead of Windows. You don't have to download any annoying additional software. Your PC finds your printer automatically. Hell, that iMac is running Mint. And pretty much the second I got Mint installed and booted into the OS for the first time, it found my printer on my home network and added it automatically. No setup, it's just ready to go. And I don't know about anyone else, but I could recount fighting to print something on Windows several times in the past. There's almost always some kind of issue there, but in Linux, flawless. It's fantastic. Next, let's try having a video call. There are three main programs that I see used most often for video calls, and they're Discord, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams. The program I use most often is Discord, and for me, running Pop! OS, Discord runs no problem. Video calling works just fine, and I'm even able to share my screen with no issues. Zoom works equally as well. And then we have Microsoft Teams, which also surprisingly works very well. All of these programs were available in my graphical package manager, and they all seem to work just as well as they do in Windows. Every now and then, it's expected that you need to install some kind of new software. So how does one go about doing so? If you're coming from another operating system like Windows or Mac OS, probably the easiest thing for you to do is search for the program you want in your distro's graphical package manager. Let's think of this like an app store, like the Play Store on Android, the App Store on iOS, or the Microsoft Store on Windows. It'll be called something different depending on which distro you're using. For me, it's called the Pop Shop, but on most distros, it'll be called something similar to Software Manager. If you can find it on there, it should be as easy as clicking on Install, and then you're good to go. You won't always see the program you want on there, though. You can also, if you don't mind learning some simple commands, use the terminal to install your software as well. Now, if you're just switching to Linux, the terminal can seem a little daunting but it's really nothing to be afraid of. For some distros, you can avoid using the terminal for a while, but if you're using Linux, you're going to have to use the terminal at some point. But not to worry. If you're running a Debian-based distro, like I am, the terminal commands are very easy to learn and understand. Here's the basic command for installing a program. sudo apt install package. Now, let's break this down bit by bit, starting with sudo. Sudo basically gives you the permission to perform whatever action you want. A lot of things you'll be doing in the terminal require this command, including, of course, installing the program. apt stands for Advanced Package Tool. This is the system on your OS that handles software package management. Its job is to carry out the installation, uninstallation, update, and upgrade of not just your installed software, but the entire operating system itself. Install is exactly what it sounds like. It's the actual thing you want the software package manager to do. 
you want it to install something. And then finally, we have the package name, the name of the software you want to install. Putting it all together is called a command. And that's a good way to understand what you're doing in the terminal. You're commanding something to perform an action. If you're ever stuck on what a command is for, just ask yourself, what action is this command trying to carry out? And what specifically is it telling to perform that action? When I'm first setting up my system, I usually use this command to quickly install all the programs I know I want right off the bat, like Steam, Discord, and OBS. Now, just like with your graphical package manager, you might not be able to find everything you need from the terminal. So what do you do if you can't find what you need from either place? Well, just like in Windows, you can download the software from the website. Most websites will have a set of commands you can copy and paste from there into your terminal. Be careful with this though. Use good internet safety when downloading anything on any operating system. If the site looks sketchy or you've looked at the command and it looks like it'll do something you don't want it to do, do not run it through your terminal. Now, sometimes when you download off the internet, you won't have commands that you copy and paste into the terminal. Sometimes you'll get something like a .deb or a .tar file. A .deb is known as a software package file. It acts much in the same way an installer does on Windows, as long as your OS of choice has something called dpackage. If you're using a Debian-based system like I am, you should already have dpackage and you can run the command sudo dpackage-i and then the package name. Again, remembering the different parts of the command, sudo gives you the permission, dpackage is the thing you're actually commanding, dash i stands for install, and it's what you're actually doing, and then the name of the package. If it's a .tar file, that basically behaves like a .zip on Windows. A lot of the time, you can actually extract the file through your distro's file manager. It's important to note that these are not the only files you run into when downloading software off the internet, but they are some of the most common you'll see, at least when downloading specifically for a Debian-based system. Most websites that I've been to have different sections for different distros. As long as you're going to the one that fits your OS, you should get the files that are easiest to install for your OS. Now, for updating the software on your operating system, and also the operating system itself, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either look for any available updates in your graphical package manager, a lot of the time your desktop environment, which is the actual thing you're using to interact with your OS, will let you know when you have updates that need to be done. Or you can also just run sudo apt update followed by sudo apt upgrade in the terminal, and this will effectively do the, the same thing. One last thing I want to discuss about using Linux is what a usual session looks like for me. I'm not installing anything, not trying to fix some issue or get a program working, I'm just turning on my computer and using it. First, just like when I was using Windows, I turn on my computer and I'm greeted with my login screen. I sign in and I start using the computer. The regular programs I use are all down here in the dock, just like they are on the task manager in Windows. I open up our official Discord, link in the description by the way, and hang out there for a bit. I usually throw up a video or stream on my second monitor for some background noise. Launching a program is as easy as clicking on its icon, just like Windows. When it's time for me to edit videos, I just open up DaVinci, begin work there. I have my file browser open on my second monitor and I just drag and drop things over as needed. It's game night with my friends tonight, so I actually save what I'm doing, close DaVinci, boot up Steam, and get on a call with everyone. When we're all done, I close the game, shut my computer down, and leave it for when I need to use it again. No headaches, no complicated steps, no guesswork. On most days, I just use the computer. And Linux has gotten stable enough that I can just turn it on when I need to get something done and go and get that thing done. Most of the time, I don't even touch the terminal. By the time you're seeing this, I have one day to go on the month-long Linux challenge. And when it's over, I don't think I was switching back to Windows. Linux has been working just fine for me and I can do all the things I enjoyed on Windows pretty much. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.